welcome everybody to the Economic Development and Planning Committee. It's six o'clock. Everybody is a voting member. Is there any discussion before we start? If there's no discussion, we'll get right to the resolutions. A resolution authorizing the county executive to sign an amended contract with T&B Engineering and Landscape Architecture PC, Montgomery County Multi-Jurisdictional Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan Update, Economic Development Planning. Sponsor? Martin and Dan. And is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Against? Anybody, uh, what do you call? Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Okay, we'll move that to the full board. Resolution designating Tourism Promotion Agency County Legislature. I would like to. I'll second. Uh, Mike Pep, Martin Kelly. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Move that to the full legislature. Resolution authorizing application for the I Love New York Tourism Pro Promotion Matching Grant Funds, Economic Development, Planning, and Tourism. That's positive. Dan Sponsor, second by Martin. Any discussion? We need an amendment. Need an amendment? What's the amendment? Do the amount normally do? For the amount? So, yeah, the amount, we have to write the application, so um, we're still looking into how much we can apply for it. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Move that to the full legislature. I don't have anything under other. Does anybody else? With motion to adjourn. Is that motion? 602. All in favor? Aye. 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 Call the Health and Human Services Committee to order. Is there any uh, privilege from Members of the committee or anyone? No, we'll move right along. First resolution is resolution authorizing county executive to sign contract for home run and turn about prevention programs. Is there a sponsor? Uh, Chairman Pep, seconded by Legislator Wilson. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carried. Next is resolution accepting funds for New York State Healthcare Workers Bonus Program. Their sponsor? All sponsor. Legislator Patel, Legislator Sweet. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried. Is there anything under other? Hearing none, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Legislator Sweet, we're adjourned. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. <clears throat> In uh, Legislator Diamond's uh, absence this evening, I'd like to call the Public Safety Committee to order. Is there anything anybody, uh, committee to all, obviously, is there any, anything anybody would like to discuss? Hearing none, we have one resolution this evening, uh, resolution authorizing the county executive to sign contract agreement with Lexus Nexus. Okay, we have legislators Kelly and uh, Pertel. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right, is there anything else anybody would like to discuss? Hearing none, uh, the Public Safety Committee, uh, committee meeting uh, motion to adjourn. Legislator Sweet, Legislator Wilson. Legislator DeChesse's absence, so uh, I will call the uh, personnel committee meeting to order and uh, also a committee of the whole. Um, anything anybody would like to discuss? Hearing none, we have a one resolution here this evening resolution authorizing the county executive to sign renewal agreement with Humana for the office of personnel. Uh, I'll sponsor that. Do we have a second? I'll second. Our, uh, Legislator Wilson. Any discussion? I have a question. Legislator Patel? Is there any significant changes that we should be aware of? Oh, there's, a slight, um, there's a slight increase. Uh, this 
Kelly, Legislator Wilson, meeting is adjourned at uh, 605. We have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right. Motion to re-adjourn. Re 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 Legislators Kelly and Wilson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. No second. I recall the Education and Government Committee to order. Uh, first thing, uh, obviously, discussion. Does anyone have anything before this committee to discuss? Okay, now we'll move on to the resolutions. First resolution is a resolution appointing Democrat Election Commissioner. Do need a sponsor? No sponsor. Second? No second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. Next resolution is a resolution appointing Montgomery County Director for the Capital District Regional Off Track Betting Corporation. Uh, any sponsor? I'll sponsor. I'll second it. Uh, we need an amendment to add a name. I'll sponsor uh, Mark Hoffman. Any discussion on the amendment? I'll second the amendment too. Sorry. Any discussion? Uh, hearing no discussion on the amendment, all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Um, do we need a vote again on the amended? No. No? no. Oh, committee phrase. Okay. All right. Anything under other? If not, motion to adjourn? Yes. So, Kelly will. <coughs> All right, I'd like to call the Budget Finance Committee meeting to order at 607. 6.07. Is there anything anybody would like to discuss on the open floor? Hearing none, we'll move right to our resolutions. First resolution, resolution authorizing the use of $500,000 of American Rescue Plan funds to contract with UTC uh, from the county legislature. I'll sponsor this. Do we have a second? Legislator Bertel. Any discussion on this? What exactly is this? Matt? This is the UTC, yes. Yeah, so this is the IT contract that we spoke about that they're gonna go and completely assess our entire system. Uh, what we're doing well, what we're not doing so well. Uh, work with <coughs> staff, uh, and supplement that staff to get projects done, set a priority list of projects, plan it out over a period of years, uh, and really be a boost the way the contract is designed is a lot like a, a legal contract where you're paying hourly. Uh, so we have our choice of different types of workers that we can bring in rather than adding a position here or there and trying to see what we can get for a network engineer. It really brings in resources. Um, they've done the same thing in Orange County um, and they've had a pretty long lasting positive relationship there. And it seems like exactly what we need. Um, with all the changes that are going on, we've fallen behind. Um, and also we have some turnover potentially with the department as soon as next year and a significant amount of turnover in the next two to three years. So getting that game plan of, of what our infrastructure is, A, where, you know, how it's all connected, what needs to be improved, developing a priority list, that's, that's really what they're going to be focusing on and, and working with basically my office IT uh, to try to put that plan together and, and get IT back to where it needs to be. They're going to be working on um, Cyber, cyber yes, yes. So it's a couple of the, in, in the contract, one of the top uh, areas of, of improvement are, uh, was the cyber security, but also, uh, you know, we're gonna have to switch over to the accounting software somewhere over the next five years. Uh, probably as Sir Sean and I are gone if we're lucky. But um, so th these are the types of things we're trying to prepare for, but cyber security is one to switch over. Everything is going cloud-based and we're having bottlenecks right now. We can't seem to break through. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. We still, you know, we're still waiting on phones. So the multi-factor that we requested is not done. It, it's I don't know what else to do at this point other than bringing in other help. You know, really.
really putting it together and getting a game plan done. And I've had some good talks with Dan and the department, and everybody is, is welcoming the help. Good. Thank you. So, so Matt, this is just to do the study, though, correct? This no, this is work hand in hand. We've done the ground level, three people that are assigned to us that will be working both on here. There'll be a, a period of time, I believe two weeks right at the beginning, but then it'll be a mix of remote and actually in person. How much time will I give? give well, how much will this time? Uh, this, this, is, this is everything we needed to get us through the end of next year. Okay. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right, that moves on to uh, next week's full meeting. Our next resolution granting $100,000 of American Rescue Plan funds to the Office for the Aging for a new roof. Awesome. All right, we got legislators Kelly and Pertel. Any discussion on that? I see the president of their board here today, uh, William Winsman. Anything you'd like to say, Bill, or no? Just we continue to appreciate Montgomery County and how much support you give the OFA. Um, greatly appreciate the partnership. All right, thank you. Um, so do we. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That moves on. All right, our next resolution is a resolution authorizing the expenditure of bed tax funds to promote tourism in Montgomery County. I'll sponsor that. Aye. Aye. All right, well, Legislator Wilson. Uh, any discussion on this? This is a familiar resolution, just this time we're using it instead of using it to uh, for matching with the, with the uh, chamber. All right. If there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right, that moves on. Our next resolution, resolution amending resolution number 117 of 2022 for American Rescue Plan funds to the Horace J. Inman Senior Center for a New Boiler. Uh, sponsored Legislator Kelly, Legislator Patel, discussion. Um, I did get a phone call today from the auditor indicating that, uh, and you got the phone call too, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, are we, uh, he was just procedurally, he said anything over 20,000 needed um, to be put out to RFP, but he realizes it's, you know, a not for profit, and as long as they got. Uh, more than one estimate uh, for all this work that you know it would pass muster from a, from a, an audit scale standpoint. My understanding is they did receive multiple bids for oh, this. Ken was going to confirm that too, was yeah. here? Uh, okay. Yeah, they, okay. they did, Chair. They received. They reached out to I think a, a dozen different vendors, and they Perfect. received That's all seven or eight different quotes. All right, all right. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. <clears throat> Our next resolution is a resolution granting $1,500,000. This is probably our single biggest expenditure, is it not, out of our ARPA funds? Yeah. Uh, of American Rescue Plan funds to the Fond de Fair. Um, I'll sponsor that. Do I have a second? Legislator Wilson? Um, can I just... Discussion. Yes. Uh, Montgomery County Agricultural Society. Fond de Fair. Not Fond de Fair. Oh. To, to the um, title of the resolution. Mm -hmm. I okay. Any further discussion? Hey, Matt, yes. I mean, this is a lot. We haven't given yeah. this much to anyone. Yeah. I mean, and we know that there's going to be need for others. Is this 100% the right direction to go with? Well, you know, this goes back to the beginning of the grant where initially we had a lot more limited flexibility with what we could do and we were focusing on uh, water and sewer and applicable projects it has since opened up um, the grant has gone from two million for the water and sewer to 1.5 for just the water after talking with uh, the fairgrounds and they have you know agreed to pay for the uh, engineering which would be the first initial upfall cost and then this will help pay for the project i mean yeah i, I just you know, we are in the budget process and we've seen, you know, we've gone and get used to the funding, you know, it is a big chunk, but I do feel, and I think we all, a lot of us feel that uh, it's a significant infrastructure project for the fair moving forward that will allow them to grow. And I think, you know, regardless of some bumps we did along the road, I do 
think it's a good project, it's worthy of being done, and I think we'll, it's one of our biggest assets in the economy. We have, it, you know, we make a lot of investments in our the business parks and tourism and things of that nature. It is also one of our biggest assets, so I do believe it's an important project. You know, I share some of the hesitation and the, the sticker shock, you know, that the board of sure shares. Uh, obviously, we've got to stay on top of this, you know, it's, there's a lot of, you know, administrative issues along the way that we've got to make sure we stay on top of, but ultimately, it's, it's before you because I think it's the right thing to do. Executive, is there any kind of, uh, given the vast and the large dollar amount versus many of the others, do we have any release arrangement with them? Sure, I heck, hate to just write them a check for a million and five, you know, as the project this manifested so much at, at various intervals. Yeah, so can we, we consider that? Just so it gets used yeah, the right so we, way. And we've talked a, a, a lot in house about the appropriate way to manage this, and it's going to have the same scrutiny that the others have had, and, and uh, we just got to stand top of it. But I mean, I don't know that the I, I don't know the extent of the scrutiny the others have had, and, and you know, I think the the biggest one we've seen. The, other than this is the half a million that we're going to control ourselves with our own department. Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, I, I'd like. To, Are you to, talking about like draws? Yeah, you know, like a, like a construction loan at a bank. You know. Yeah. No, so much gets done, you get to this much. So yeah. No, this is basically what will happen is the, the funding's allocated, but then which then allows the engineering company to have a contract with the fair, write the bid, get the bid out, see exactly what it's going to cost. Then when we have that, you know, picking a contractor, that bill, you know, as we've had, we've done in the past, might go directly to the contractor. That's the way we've been doing it. Um, so that that would stay the same. That's kind of what I meant by that previous contract. Oh, okay. So it, it, there's no, you know, just write a check. There you go. It's this is a process, and, and the first step is the engineering, which is you know one of the things I heard loud and clear from the board was we want to see some skin in the game. You know, so that, that engineering is that first upfront cost, that's the skin in the game that you get right out of the gate. Then the bids go out, and then it's, then it's time to, to execute, and you, you know, look at the bids, make sure it's done appropriately. Um, and then then the contractors get paid from there. And we have a hard limit at 1.5 million for us in that resolution. They get paid as things are done, or in one? I mean, it Can't sounded like the that. scrutiny you described was all gonna be all the due diligence leading up to validating us giving them this money, but how about once the project starts, you know? Okay. Chair, yeah, Chair, no, what they're doing, what they've done, like say with the Charlotte Park project, is we'll get invoices directly for work that's been performed. Oh, okay. And we'll try to, if, if possible, we'll cut the check directly to the vendor. And in this case, because it's such a large project, we'll cut checks directly to the contractors for services already rendered. As, as work has been done, right. okay. Yes. okay, that's that's what I was getting. And, and one thing I would just add to that is, you know, this was virgin territory for the county, sure. coming into ARPA, and really, uh, Ken's office has done a great job of working through that. Megan has been a big help as well, as well as you know the auditor. You know, we've kind of gotten this process down now, and it's right. it, it, it's, it's working pretty well. I think okay. also the contract between the contractor and the Montgomery County Agricultural. Will set parameters, payments, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. certain construction highlights. Okay. And I'm assuming they're going to have to have bids. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah. so that's not just the yeah. after yeah. neighbor come over here. No, it'll be it'll be bid out. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And those are some of the big discussions we had early on. And I'm trying to work through some of that. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right, that moves on. And our final resolution, a resolution approving abstract of audit claims. Oh, extension of the last day of redemption. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't apologize. A resolution authorizing the extension of the last day of redemption for delinquent taxes. Have a sponsor? Legislator Kelly? I'll second. Legislator Edwell? Discussion? Legislator Bertel? Can we have some background why we're doing this? Um, it was an advertising issue when the Courier Standard stopped publishing. I mean, last year, the foreclosure only got published in one paper, where it's a two paper requirement. So we have to advertise, do an ad in the, the Leader Herald as well to, go out to meet the law requirement of advertising in two newspapers for the 2020. We are still proceeding with the foreclosure on 18 and 19. 
Congress. So what this won't be a recurring thing. This is an adjustment to our timeline because of the courier standards. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. And our uh, final resolution approving abstract of audit and claims. I'll sponsor it a second. Somebody? Anybody? Second. All right, Legislator Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. All right. Um, that takes care of the resolutions. Quickly, we'll just go to the, you got your dashboards there. Um, <coughs> we'll do a real quick overview here. I mean, you know, we do have the DSS folks here today. It says claims are recorded through August. Uh, we're probably at a point in September close or no? Do we know that? Yes. Yes? Yes, they were submitted three business Okay, beautiful. Thank you. So that should pick up along there. Nothing else really too alarming. Um, sales tax. Um, we closed out this third uh, quarter, so to speak, um, in the month of October. Um, we're at uh, the first set of months that you see there, we were 1.262 over last year. The second set of months, we were 765,000, almost 766 over last year. This third set of months, we're 1,792,000 over the previous year. So far, we're about 3.8 million over last year through October aggregate. Last year's uh, total received for the year was 41.5. If this pace stays up and there's no gain on it, through uh, January here, as you see, the December stuff coming into January, we will exceed 45 million in sales tax revenue, about 45, 45, four, roughly. And we budget? And we budget 34 million, 250. So some good progress there. All right, um, the moment we've all been waiting for, our departmental review, <clears throat> some waiting more than, longer than others. Uh, and uh, our first uh, department it will be uh, public and mental health and uh, Sarah Barenko. Sarah, would you like to come on up? How are you this evening? I'm good. Thank you. That's good. Um, Sarah, your budgets look pretty tight. Um, from what we can see here, you know, uh, obviously between the two departments, one, one down overall year over year, about 72, one up 108. Uh, our list of explanations are provided by the treasurer who <clears throat> gives us a little synoptic review. Um, and uh, in, in your world, um, you know, in the public health increases offset by additional revenues. Mental health, $100,000 increase in court expenses for mental health programs. So if you'd like to talk about anything else, um, uh, doesn't, any, nothing looks too alarming here, Sarah. Um, but anybody else, the floor is open to ask questions, or if you want to speak about anything, feel sure. free. Sure, absolutely. So I just um, want to give a little bit of synopsis over the past year of where we have been and where I'd like to go. So um, in 2021, when I sat here, I really had no idea where our departments, um, and you know, the two departments that I oversee, are going. And um, we were hoping that our pandemic would move into the endemic state. You know, uh, most entities in the county, organizations, businesses, um, were handling 10, 20, 100, 170 employees with COVID and COVID related issues. And my staff maintained uh, COVID quarantine, isolation, case counts for 48,000 plus residents that live here, as well as all of the other mandated programs that we are by law let the legislative body is supposed to oversee. We know overdoses are up. We know suicide rates are up. The lack of service providers is down about 25% uh, since the start of the pandemic. People are retiring at an early age. It has left our children with special health care needs, early intervention, as well as three to five services down about 25% with providers. And our caseload has more than doubled as I sit here today. Uh, to where it was in February of 2022. So that 
creates a big problem for us. We have um, had to not only quarantine people, but our rabies program has increased um, from about 140 animal reports a year to about 208 reports a year. That's a, a huge jump for us um, as far as what we need to pay out for post-exposure, what we need to pay for those, um, those folks to get the care that they need. We also have um, our mental health programs which are struggling to find licensed clinical therapists as well as psychiatrists and medical doctors to provide services to our children as well as adults in our county who are struggling uh, with mental health and substance abuse issues. So our department has taken on the task of providing at least one Narcan training a month to the community, as well as one Stop the Bleed training, uh, which is happening actually tonight at the EMO. And as a result, we have been able to train 469 new Montgomery County residences, residents in how to administer Narcan to save folks' lives. As a result, result of this, in working with Tom Pasarelli from GAVAC in 2021, we hosted daily Narcan trainings at the Fonda Fair, and we're speaking of the Fonda Fair, and we handed out over 40 doses of Narcan, and GAVAC did not have to respond to one overdose at the fair. In 2019, they responded to 11 overdoses at the fairgrounds. In 2022, they had two non-fatal overdoses that they had to respond to because we were able to provide training and Narcan to the folks that work at the fair as well as fair goers. So while that all sounds like doom and gloom, there is a lot of good news as uh, Chairman Peck, as you stated, we did receive $77,500 to our base grant, which went up from, uh, which went up from the $500,000. The intent of this really was to retain and reward uh, public health staff for the work that we do on a daily basis. Other surrounding counties have implemented uh, pay increases as well as, um, hired a, a bunch of new staff. We are not at that point yet. But we also did receive $33,000 to hire new staff for our children with special health care needs. The state looked at our data and looked at our numbers and realized that since we had more than doubled in our caseloads, that the three service coordinators uh, are not sufficient to manage those caseloads and the caps that are set forth by New York State to run that program. So we are getting more money. Um, we did receive also, it's not in this um, budget at this point, a $10,000 performance incentive payment, which as a, as a public health department, we are often given tasks that if you do more work, we'll give you more money. So we had three tasks that we had to complete and upon completion, we will be getting that $10,000 and we just received word today actually that we would be getting that in 2023. So I'll be putting up a resolution for that. Um, and in the mental health department, yes, our court-related expenses are up, but knock on wood, we were very lucky for three years. We didn't have to uh, utilize those funds, and now we do, unfortunately. Um, at the NISAC level, the uh, NISAC folks, along with the county executives that sit on that committee, have been lobbying for New York State to take back that portion of payment, which is how it should be if they are incarcerated in a forensic unit as regulated by the Office of Mental Health, then it really should be the state's responsibility to pay for those forensic restorative services. It should not fall onto the county. So that is that huge increase that you are seeing, that we are now mandated uh, by 730 CPL law uh, and Jackson petitions that Megan helps me with frequently to uh, fight those in court so that we are not fiscally responsible for folks who are deemed incompetent to restorative services. Siri so doing some magic over there, especially the last several years. Uh, and you continue to do it. Thank you. We Jeff. appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions? Legislator Sweet? Sir, over the, throughout your public health uh, budget, there are multiple lines uh, listed as special costs, which hasn't had anything before that. They all added to a little over 110000 Just explain to me what those are. I'm just curious. So I'm very excited, actually, to talk about that. Uh, this is something Sean and I have been working on for several years. Previously, with folks that were working in auditing, they wanted a very clear distinction of how every dollar from our special cost line item that the state gives us uh, they wanted that broken out. Um, Sean and I and Connie worked to lump that to manage uh, the funds so it mirrors the state budget. So special costs, you will no longer see things like um, 
computer equipment, you won't see band-aids, you won't see sharps, needle disposal. So all of the programs that we run, you will no longer see that as part of the budget, but we will keep track of that internally for the grant. So it can all be paid out of one line item instead of having to be broke out out of several line items, which is redundant. Anybody else? Thank you. And you're facing the skeleton crew, so there's, there's only six of us here, so less people to ask questions. So. Wonderful. But you know, not a lot to ask questions about here. You're running a tight ship, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. All right. Now we'll call up uh, personnel and our personnel director. Nicole Yeagle. Nicole, the uh, year over year changes uh, don't look monumental, about 69000 uh, in your main budget, and uh, obviously the health, dental, and vision, which uh, pretty much covers everybody's health insurance coverage, um, amounts going up to 122000 so everything looks uh, normal uh, in that regard uh, and expected. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? No, I just thank you very much for having me tonight. Um, as you know, we are comprised of the A, the M, and the MS fund. Um, approximately $2,200 is the county's um, overall budget. Um, and as you see, there is overall increases in those funds, which are to be expected. Mm -hmm. um, and in some of those increases, uh, largely due to the fringe, but also in our new cloud hosting uh, for our payroll program, we're going to be increasing uh, the security and upgrading our, our door swipes uh, in all the county office buildings mm -hmm. and um, transferring to key fobs. And then um, additional for our labor relations, increase in the M fund um, and for health insurance and then for to cover stop loss, increases in stop loss. Numbers came in today, preliminary. We're expecting at least a 10% increase in staff loss, but um, our carrier is shopping that to try to get a lower uh, impact. And then we're still continuing to work on methods in which to try to save money uh, overall for the county. We continue our wellness initiatives um, in workers' compensation. We've increased and then increased the budget for surveillance to combat um, fraudulent claims. And uh, we will continue working hard with our providers and, and uh, overall claims. All right. Any of the other legislators have any questions for Nicole? And Nicole, um, um, other service fees. Which fund? It's um, general fund. General fund. Okay. It went from eighty-three thousand one hundred sixty thousand. Yep. So that is where the uh, new door swipes. That'll be a one-time for new door swipes uh, in there. So that's that's accounted for that large. And the miscellaneous supporting services went from 10 to 50,000 to 40,000. Yep, so out of that line, we pay for our physical agility test uh, EAP through St. Mary's Hospital, which is a um, essential program that we have, but also in that line is where our cloud health is coming from. Okay. Any other else? Miscellaneous supported services. This year we moved some money over to that line. So is that money not going to be used this year and we're going to use it next year? <coughs> so miscellaneous supported services. So some of our, you'll see in the amended for 2022, you'll see some increases for this year. Some of that is to do with our projects that are going on for the annex building. Okay. Because we adjusted the budget after adopted to about 50. After the budget, after the budget, yeah. So. <clears throat> All right, everybody good? Mm -hmm. Nicole, great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for you and your staff. Thank you. <clears throat> and last but not least, we have the folks from DSS, Anna, Jess, and Tommy. Mm -hmm. 
$21,113.23. So we're working hard on getting those four new funds uh, that are coming to us. Uh, also, we're working hard to uh, save money by working by working to avert, uh, for instance, congregate care costs. Uh, right now, it, on average, it costs $300 a day to put a child in a congregate care facility. Uh, so we're working hard to keep them out of those congregate care facilities. Also, in regard to what we call QI assessments, that's qualified individual assessments. When it's any time a, a, a person is moved uh, into a facility, we have to do a QI assessment, which costs $2,000 a pop. Uh, we have an arrangement uh, through St. Mary's uh, to use uh, one of their uh, clinicians to go do that uh, for us free. So we're saving $2,000. Uh, uh, a situation on that. Just in the way of trends, uh, HEAP applications are on the rise. As we all know, 28% increase in uh, heating oil this year, and that's impacting us. Homeless applications are increasing. We had six homeless applications just yesterday, uh, and they continue to come in. Uh, housing inventory is decreasing, so we don't have many places to put these people. Uh, CPS cases still average. <coughs> plus 100 to 120 per month. Uh, they raised the lower age law, which some of you may be familiar with. Basically what that did was it raised the age uh, of JD to 12. So that puts pressure on our adolescents. Uh, also, uh, cross-system children are consuming a lot of staff time. You know, we have a case right now uh, in a hospital uh, that uh, we've been working on for three months. Uh, and I need to say publicly, the state is not helping us. Uh, they're not offering any solutions. They're expecting DSS to address the situation. Uh, our foster care children need to be seen twice a month. Again, that requires staff time. 
and there is a caseload shift from family assistance to safety net. Uh, we do look for cost saving opportunities every day. And Jess? Yes, absolutely. We were very deliberative and very strategic about what we asked for this year around. And to address specifically, to show how strategic we were, those three line items that you had asked about. Um, number one was about the increase in the computer for about 33000 it was actually 38,900 that is one time for the third server and that will be in Banner Road because we are setting up an entirely new server. We can't just take the one out of this building and establish it there. Right. So that would be for this year. Um, aside from that, we had in fact de decreased this particular line. Um, the second one that you had inquired about was 4462, the increase towards HANF funding. So we had worked on reducing any of the other contracts that we had in that line to the extent possible, but this does include our home run turnout program. And they, like us, have overhead costs that are increasing day by day. Um, and then the third one you had asked about was service fees, which is our 4438 line. And that increase is directly attributable to the increase in code blue and the number, number of homeless that we are housing during the winter months from October to March. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Fire away, let's look. You both talked about the homeless and increasing yes. and the lack of housing. Now there's probably 200 apartments being built in Montgomery County and some of them deliberately for mental health purposes. I mean, how is that going to affect your budget? So if it were, and I'm sure all of our work goes hand in hand with Sarah's, we have multiple different programs that run housing, that um, are attributable to housing, including our Code Blue, um, our, new, our new one this year, which is Rental Supplemental Income, and the extant um, PA grants that we've always, we've known about and been in, administering for years. Excuse me. Um, However, if those per people were to receive services, they could receive services under any one of those programs, but it would be under the existing programs. So as opposed to potentially someone who is um, homeless being housed under Code Blue, we may be able to get them into an apartment where instead of paying $75 a night, we're now paying a reduced maybe six hundred dollars for an apartment for the month. Right. So my, I guess my point is, do you see a reduction in the future because of that? Because of the code blue and because of the, you know, the, the trend that I see through my business is that there's there's landlords now turning their properties instead of apartments into rooms and and charging four times as much uh, on a monthly basis by opening up these 200 <coughs> apartments for mental health and for, I would assume, lower income, uh, I would hope that we'd see some reduction in some of those costs and probably a better quality of, 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 of housing. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, I agree with that. And we have been working with Mayor Salquanti on uh, making sure that uh, the facilities we use are habitable. Thank you. I'm going to ask a hypothetical question. It may sound outlandish, but what if, do we have any kind of contingency plans in case we end up with uh, immigrants? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, Teresa has been working on uh, some contingency plans. Uh, we're actually looking to see if the old county home might have some available rooms. We're going Good. to make a call there. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, are looking at potential other properties that, again, could house immigrants. It's something that we've talked about in our staff meetings, and we have Teresa's taking the lead on, mm -hmm. again, finding those places. We are, <coughs> I tell my staff, there's three words I want you to think about. Anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we're anticipating. Okay, thanks. I just, yeah. when Bob asked that yeah. question, that made me think of the other one. It's a good know, question. And every a lot of communities <coughs> face with that out of the blue sometimes. So, um, let's let her have a look. Um, 
Why such an increase in the daycare program? So that is actually, and I want to make sure I have the numbers in front of me. So we have two different um, things that are affecting that this year. Rollover funds and pandemic funds. During the, and I know they run on the, fis the federal fiscal year as opposed to January, February, uh, January to December, like we run. Um, but there were funds given to us to use during the pandemic to assist people in either continuing to be employed and social distancing um, and other items of that nature, which added to what our, our normal allotment would be. Some of those funds have rolled over into this year to the tune of about $200,000. Um, and then there was additional um, rollover funds for money that we had not spent from our exit grant. Unfortunately, during that time, less people were able to go to work or were um, not utilizing it to its fullest extent. So I did not use the entire allocation last year and they rolled over the funds for our use for this year with the anticipation that they will in fact be used with the next special fiscal year. Our child care unit has instituted an outreach uh, program so that uh, again, we can try to draw in people who again will be utilized those, those funds. Yes, and we've additionally increased um, this last year the income limit for people uh, to receive the funds. Before, before this, a household of say four would be around sixty thousand. Now, a household of four can make up to eighty-five thousand and receive daycare assistance, which means that these funds will absolutely be utilized to help out. Absolutely, they will be. That's got to be a lot of people. We need that sample in our county. It covers a large portion yeah, yeah. of the county. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Legislators Kelly, Sweet, Bertel, Wilson, all set? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Tom, Jess, thank you. Oh, our pleasure. You're right. This is a big ship to steer within this county, and you guys are doing a good job. Thanks. All right. Yes. Just some uh, final notes. Uh, Cheryl sent out the sheets. Uh, day or two after last week's meeting. Um, when do you need them by? By Friday. Okay, uh, with any amendments you'd like to make to the budget? And uh, Friday is awful tough. What's Mondays that? are much better. Yeah, they've got the whole weekend to work on. I mean, that's fine, but you're doing a struggle on Tuesday because I wanted to get it back to you guys. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pay I mean, shoot for Friday and if you need them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, is there anything else anybody would like to talk about under budget and finance? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Legislator Kelly, Legislator Wilson, meeting adjourned at 6.48. Thank you all.